Welcome to the fourth part of the Agent Compendium. If you didn't watch the other parts, please do that before listening to this one because you might actually miss some context. If you guys know, we already have been through duelists, we have been through initiators, controllers, and now we're gonna explain the Sentinel's Agent Compendium. We're gonna start with the complexity. There's a little bit to talk about here. Um, so, Chamber, before the nerf, I actually had him on complexity 2 out of 10, and after the nerf, I actually increased it to 3 out of 10. The reason for that, though, even though he has simpler to use TP, because now you just pop one and it works, right? And before you had two of those, you have a more complex decision to make because you are more exposed. You are easier to kill. So you cannot be brain dead and just put one TP here, the other one somewhere safe and be like, yeah, that's good. That's good enough. Now I actually have to think a little bit more in how to play chamber effectively because otherwise you're going to get punished. So his complexity actually went up by making him simpler to play, right? So I hope you, that's understandable, but he's still like very easy to play. Like there's not much complexity here. It's just, you know, you shoot heads, you TP away and, and, and there's a trap and that's about it. Now, now when it comes to Killjoy Cypher, I put them in a similar complexity because you have to uh, be one of those, you are one of those agents that you can play the same setups on defense and attack. But if you want to really be um, you want to really be efficient as a sentinel in the form of Kildren Cypher, you need to adapt to what your opponent is doing. And because of because your opponents are gathering info on how you play your setups, you have to change them up. But that's what that's where the complexity comes from on those agents. You need to be very innovative and and just you have to think about how you play this game. And you cannot go into a default playbook mode. You can have a default playbook mode for the start, but during the game you are expected to evolve as an agent. Uh, and that's every game, which makes them enjoyable to play if you like that play style. Uh, remember also, when it comes to Killjoy, the ultimate is actually pretty complicated to play with. As it turns out, immortal free players are not capable of doing that. There's a Lotus Lab episode about that. You can search for that. The Killjoy ultimate requires a little bit different approach to the game than with the different uh, than with the other ultimates. Now Sage complexity two out of ten. One will think, wait, wait, what? Why? Well, she's very simple to play. The heal just look with the sky is just click and forget. Um, the the walls and 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 the like the wall and the slows are essentially almost have almost the same function. They're just stalling, you know. And the ultimate. Well, it's really not complicated to use, is it? Right? You even have restricted uh, like options how to use it because you're required a dead body. A dead body, well, you know, you don't have many options. There's either one or two or sometimes three next to you and that's about it. So there's not much complexity uh, built into the Sage. Now, when it comes to the um, primary roles, it's actually kind of interesting that we only have four Sentinels, right? And only two of those serve the purpose of a Sentinel. That's at least my, my perception of them. Like, the Killjoy and the Cypher, in my eyes, are the personification of the word Sentinel. The other two, Chamber and Sage, shouldn't be even called, most likely, Sentinels. So, for Chamber, his primary role, he's like a, he's like a Killjoy turret, but an actually Killjoy turret with a gun, and it's controlled by a player. That's his primary role. He's, he, he is one of the traps that sentinels are putting on site to have like a passive info, right? So he wants to get a first contact, try to get a lucky kill and TP out into safety, right? And that's that's essentially his role of angle holds and trade denial. So that's his primary role. That's how you should be playing every round because otherwise you're not doing your job. So it's very, also very streamlined the way you should play chamber. Now, when it comes to Kildra and Cypher, the primary role is surveillance, which is something that is, in my eyes, as I said, personification of the role, of the Sentinel role. You want to have as, as much info and map control just by using your utility. When you play Killjoy and Cypher, you essentially are not expected to die before your utility has any use. Because that means that you essentially discarded everything that your agent delivers for the team. That's why it's so important to play on contact on the turret, play on the contact on the alarm board, or use the camera for the contact and the traps, right? That's your main role. The surveillance and the passive info that those three agents are delivering 
is their role and it's that is this that is the main reason why you want to play those agents to deliver map control with the utility now when it comes to sage i didn't put any surveillance there because she doesn't have anything her expertise is the stalling ability right she is good at stopping a push by making certain that the players cannot just run through an area with the slows right the wall is like a and that's very important to understand why is it called passive restricted info in her secondary role her wall has multiple functions but typically it's just used as a barrier that is not passable and it's like a trap for 35 seconds that gives you map control but it's restricted by the timer right so that wall at some point is gonna get destroyed or will just get this um will just be you know will just disappear and you lose that map control that's why she's restri restricted with the passive info while the other three sentinels have a passive info as long as those traps are not being destroyed or you're still in range right so it's very important to understand that sage doesn't deliver the map control in the same way that the other agents in this category do and um yeah, and then we have the tier theory role uh, because passive info is like, as I said, just, just exact opposite of, of what Sage has, right? It's like you have the passive info of the map just by having the utility there till it's get destroyed. Now, tier theory role, chamber is something that I find this actually interesting because when the chamber was most broken for an entire year, you essentially didn't see his tier theory role being in, used in pro play because the most mechanically um advanced player in a team was playing chamber right so he was expected to perform so he was always getting the best guns which is something that is complete completely contradict in uh, contradicts contradicts the way that the designers actually built him because chamber was built in mind that he is dropping the guns to the other players and he's playing with the headhunter when it's required when you want to build up economy right or with the ultimate but you have seen, for example, many rounds like with Ardis when he was playing Chamber, four other players in his team were playing with Sheriffs and he was given the Vandal. And sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, but one, one would think it would be more effective to give the Chamber his headhunter and the Chamber would drop the Vandal to someone else, right? But because of the fact that everyone who was playing Chamber was most likely the best aimer in the team, well, he was given the uh, biggest gun in the in that round because of that. But now I feel like that role, if he will be picked in pro play, this role might be actually having a better, a bit um, bigger impact than before. Now for Killjoy zoning post plant um, zoning very important to understand when you do an execute the the ability to throw two mollies and check two corners actually effectively because they deal lethal damage is very important so the zoning ability is very nice and it also she zones out people with the ultimate so that's like her actually on attack that's her main role essentially if you're attacking and executing sites so this kind of swaps with the primary role but uh in general it's still very important to understand when do you use the mollies to zone and when do you keep the mollies for post plant and that comes from expertise i guess on that uh, on that agent for cypher he earns a lot for uh, for being a wedding photographer so kudos cypher fantastic keep it up and sage the off angle safe plant like on that tag you see for example on ascend there's many uh, rounds being decided by the fact that sage just off angles in the window on b main or just pops the wall behind the smoke and suddenly there's an off angle for the attackers for multiple of them so that's one of the uh roles that she plays in the team while attacking safe planting of course is also like similar to harbor but she's actually better than better than harbor in that regards because the multiple uh you know the wall has multiple uh blocks which can be destroyed so you never know uh from the opponent's perspective if you're gonna get an angle on the opponent that is planting or not not like with the smoke from harbor that you just destroy and then guys exposed um but her safe plant is actually important on maps like icebox it helps out on bind as well but that's not currently in the poll now when it comes to the attack order right we're putting um we're putting a chamber on secondary entry because of his um because of his uh nerf slash buff because in this in this case 
the nerf is actually a buff. He is expected to run in with the team when you're doing an execute, right? Remember, attack order is about the execute on site. So right now, Chamber has like a mini Phoenix ult every single round equipped because the area of his TP is so big. So he's expected to run in, get contact, maybe or the trade and TP out to denial the trade on himself, right? Killjoy and Cypher, I would say that that, uh, that really depends on... Uh, let's, let's talk about Killjoy first. Like, she's more of a support. I don't think she will run in into any of the side, like, secondary entry if there are other players available, because, you know, depending if she was actually using the nanosomes for zoning or did she keep it for post plan. If she's keeping them for post plan, then she's more important as a support, right? And if she did just use them for zoning, well, then she is actually a capable secondary entry as well. Um, now, when it comes to Cypher, support Lurk, kind of similar to Killjoy, but his Lurk ability is very high. We're going to explain that in a moment. And Sage is just literally a secondary entry. You should never think, like with Sky, right? When you play Sky or Sage, you should never think you're a support player just because you have a heal in your disposal. That heal is a bonus. It's not a... Um, it's not a factor that you should never that you should ever think about. The heals in this game are really not important. They are a bonus that sometimes is just nice to have, but it's not a deciding factor in almost any of the rounds. Now, when you have the ultimate though, well then you want to be a little bit more supportive, right? Because you don't want to die first or before other players are are killed. So that's that's a little bit of difference, but it's also a niche moment when you have the ultimate up. Now Let's explain uh, the lurking aspect, because many people were, uh, before I release uh, this part, many people were making comments, blah, 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 but Killjoy 3 out of 10, what are you, what are you a noob? Well, the thing is, the lurking aspect, right, where, what I'm judging here, the scale is based on the, you know, on the role that you play, and is the agent designed to help you with lurking? And from all the sentinels, Actually, Killjoy is the least equipped. And when I think about it, she should probably have even less uh, lurking ability than Sage. But Sage, uh, I put her on the same because Sage has some of the utility that is helpful for the team. But I'll explain that in a moment. So Chamber, 5 out of 10. He's now on a leash with the trap as well. So it's not as easy for him to just be on the map everywhere. He has an ability to go through traps um like you know if he ha if see if he sees the cypher trip in front of him he can use his tp to go through it like before um but it's like he's not, not really that effective on it right and with the ability now to be a secondary entry because the chamber uh, tp has ha such a high range i don't believe that he's the best agent to lurk in a team and if you have another agent that has a higher lurking um design i feel like that should be the designated lurker rather than chamber just because you're a sentinel people just associate that a sentinel should be a lurker for some reason but it's not that's not correct right like those agents don't have the most tailored um most tailored uh, um, utility to help them with that with that uh, role now killjoy is even lower than chamber because one she has no mobility aspect or vision denial aspect to play around traps like there's no way you have nothing. You cannot go through a cipher trap without alerting the cipher. You cannot go through any of the uh, utility that the opponents will set up because you have to destroy it. And also, both of your utility pieces are re area restricted. So you don't have that much of space that you want to create if you want your uh, like anti-flanks um uh, utility uh, to be active that's why i'm putting her three out of ten and in my perspective she's not a lurker but she's a default holder you know like when you play default if you don't know what was default type an exclamation mark default in my in my chat or just find a default episode in lotus lab but the thing is people often mistake uh, mistake the fact that if you're just holding an angle in a default, that is not exactly lurking. Lurking is actively getting map control and rotation info. And that is not going to happen if you're just holding a default. So, and she's better at holding a default 
because of the fact because of the way that her utility works you can play on the contact of your of your utility and get easy kills on those uh, uh, uh on those players right but if you if you are actively trying to get map control as a killjoy you're not going to be effective it's just the agent is not built this way um while the opposing is can be said on cypher cypher is fantastic about uh, 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 when it comes to lurks because one he's not restricted with his utility he can be anywhere on the map and his utility will still work he doesn't have the ability to go through other cipher traps right because of uh, the, the 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 you know he has nothing no mobility but he has two smokes to vision denial so he can go through chamber traps, he can go through killjoy traps, and be certain that he's not getting spotted, which is a big aspect. And also, even, like, you know, he is capable, because those smokes are so cheap, to use them every round to condition opponents with vision denial at the beginning of the round to create pressure. That's why Cypher, in my books, is the best agent from all the Sentinels to lurk, and also his, his ultimate is just bonk is bad so there's no reason for him to be with any of the team because it's, it's, yeah it's really not good so uh cypher has like almost no ability to help his teammates with an execute or something right uh so he's he's excelling at the lurk role but remember when you pick an agent for yourself pick an agent that supports your playstyle and not the other way around Right? If you are a good lurker, you should play the agents that have the good lurking scale. But if you're not a good lurker, don't just pick Cypher and play that role because you're going to be bad at it. So it, even if you play Cypher but you're a bad lurker, just play a support role instead for the team. Right? Just don't play the lurk if you're not good at it. That's very important to understand that it's in th this is not a MOBA. Right? This is a this is a game where you as a player create a playstyle and not the other way around. The agent supports your playstyle, but it doesn't designate how you play the game because fundamentally speaking, the agents are all the same. Now, when it comes to uh, preferred defense role, it's very simple to understand. All of those agents are expected to be an anchor on site. Um, like, that just means that unless someone crosses from the opponent and commits to us uh, crosses the barriers and crosses the the the, the sideline on the defense on the other side of the map you are sitting on your side you are expected to be an anchor on your defense and not rotate right you're a very important aspect of 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 map control and if you're ever getting lurked on as a, if you're playing a sentinel like a killjoy in cypher and you're getting lurked upon well that is your fault that is the good lurker and deposing team, but it's also your fault because you have the passive info and you should be aware of it. That's why that's why it's, uh, it's so important to understand that the passive info the surveillance is so crucial for the Sentinels. Now, I put also on Sage the rotator role because the, uh, this is more like practice than design. In practice, Sage is one of the agents that walls off one of the angle on defense and over rotates right so there's also a lot of slap episode about that by the way if you want to find it it's like a why is uh, why is the sage wall uh smarter than immortal free players i think that's what it's called so um that's essentially her function but i don't think it's like a good design choice i, I think just that just practice experience that players just learned and it's a nice tool to have because you're able to rotate for 35 uh, seconds over rotate and stack as a, uh, a, a site essentially now uh, both chamber and sage are able to be off angle holders kind of self-explanatory right in general and because of that sage has a little bit of defense sniper um, function a little bit better than killjoy and cypher but it's still very low because you're able to play an off angle but chamber excels at that he is definitely the best defensive sniper in the game because he gets multiple options when it comes to actually getting a frag with the operator and he has one that he can just equip when he has the ultimate. And let's talk about the orb priority. So um, let's talk about the uh, attack first. Cypher 0 out of 10. I don't think we have to explain it, right? It, it, but actually, let's, let me give it context because if you didn't watch the other parts, this is actually important. The orb priority works in a vacuum. 
If we're starting a game, we have five agents in our team. Every single agent is zero out of his ultimate, right? He has zero orbs on his ultimate status. And you have an orb in front of you, and you give that orb to one of your agents. That's the orb priority, right? That's how important that, you t that piece of ultimate will be for the round on the attack side, right? So if you get that ultimate, that's why the Killjoy has the highs from all the Sentinels because it, it is an actual tool to create and execute on the site, in most cases at least, right? So you're able to attack and initiate and execute and the site attack with the Killjoy ultimate, which cannot be said about any of the other ults. That are on the that are in the disposal for um, sentinels like cipher is just super restricted requires a dead body um, chamber builds up uh, the the um, the the economy of the team which is semi important that's why you see jet neon are also on the same or priority because if you don't have a more important ultimate that's actually a semi decent one to build up and uh, sages four out of ten and I have been also like attacked by the, some of the lesser, let's say, equipped um, players. Uh, why is Sage is just so low on, on all priority? Her ultimate's fucking broken. No, it's not. Like her ultimate is actually pretty fucking bad. She is not only an eight orber, which requires so much resources to build up, but also her ultimate is super restricted. Like not only are they required to have a dead body, but also that dead body has to be in a specific spot to get a res on, right? In a safe way. Or you have to sacrifice your wall to get that res off. And your opponents can actually gain info from that as well. Her ultimate is a it is not a proactive ultimate, right? It's reactive. And because of that, I don't think it's any good on the attack if you have any of the other ultimates that have a higher stakes, right? And being an 8 orb is also a pain in the ass. Like, yeah, very low on my on my scale. Now, when it comes to the uh, on the defense, there's a big swap here. Cypher stays on 0 out of 10. That, that's, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Sage stays the same as well. It's I would even say that maybe you can consider orb priority on defense being lower than on attack for Sage, but we'll keep it on the same because it's even harder to get a res on the defense if you're being on, like, if, if opponents are just executing the other side of your map, there's almost no way you're going to get a res in most cases because your, your teammates will be dead in the map of the zone, sorry, in the zone of the map that is being now controlled by the opponents. Um, but it's very important to understand why Chamber is so high on my list because in many maps, in many maps, having the operator is a win condition. You know, having the ability to have such a strong weapon control an angle or control a portion of the map and have him stationed there gives you a certainty on what the opponents will be doing, right? And it's also a stall, stalling piece of utility if he gets the kill. So it's essentially like a multifunction, not only builds up economy, not only gives you a, probably a very uh, aggressive map control, but also stops a push if you get that kill. Right, So it's very important on the defense because on most maps, you want to build up economy to have an operator in every round on the defense. right? While, um, for example, Killjoy Ultimate, well, it is a retake tool. It maybe can stop a push, but none of that is certain. It can still be, and now it's also easier to destroy it. Even with the HP buff, it's still easy to destroy and you get the information on the player that is playing the Killjoy on where she is, right? So it's like, it's not bad, it's not terrible, just like the certain uh, series that we have watched on HBO, um, but there are better ultimates on the defense they would rather have than the Killjoy ultimate. Uh, so yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we're gonna add, once we have patches and once we have new agents coming in, we're gonna update this compendium and we're gonna add different functions to this compendium as well with like uh, map preferences and dual preferences that are going to be in another sheet here so i'm going to also update that at some point thank you for listening hope you guys enjoyed it and learned a little bit alongside this content and uh, you know feel free to share with your friends because i hope everyone will have a better ranked experience at some point